We'd like to now welcome to the show our first guest for this evening, Mr. Doug Gustafson from the organization Homes Now Not Later. Hey, Doug. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thanks for being here, Doug. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I'm just going to ask a question uh, because everybody wants to know what's happening at Homes Now. There's been a lot of controversy. Tell uh, us. Oh, yeah, so there's been a lot of things happening at Homes Now. Um, uh, first of all, we're running Unity Village, our tiny home community that is located in Fairhaven. Mm -hmm. um, we were, that site is on city land, and so they have uh, agreed to allow us to use that site until April 30th of 2020. Now, what's been happening with Homes Now over the last two months was we had a, we had a recent um, thing where the f former president had, had it was, uh, I had uncovered information that indicated that financial um, improprieties happen with donor money. And so as soon as we found that out, you know, we exposed it. And once we exposed it, we wanted to fix it. And um, and it's and you d one person's actions are, do not reflect on the organization as exactly. a whole, and that's what we mainly want to say. But um, the good thing about it, though, is that things have moved in a really positive direction. I feel really good about the future. Um, the the we are putting out a petition to extend our current site at the current location for as long as we can. It's right next mm -hmm. to the sewer treatment plant. It's not due to be worked on for three years. Um, or used uh, when the sewer treatment plant expands in three years. And so until then, why not let us use it? Um, uh, but anyway, our contract is officially over at the end of April. So we're trying to secure a, a site to move Unity Village to. We're, gonna, we're doing a private fundraiser to buy our own land. We're also working with the county to and identified a number of sites to um, that for a second site, uh, mm -hmm. Sat Paul, who's coming in as county executive soon, um, he he uh, said that he was interested in working with us for a second site, not to move Unity Village to, but at, for a second site. And right. we're we're all for that. That's what we want. We want to expand. So, yeah. it's it's been a wild ride, but it's going pretty good. Cool. That's amazing. And can you be a little bit more specific about what Homes Now is actually trying to do? Yeah. Homes Now's mission right now, is, and will always be our mission, is to end homelessness one person at a time. So that that's the most simple way I can describe it. And so you know whether you're whether you're out there on the street in the cold in, on the concrete, or whether you just need a little bit of help to mm -hmm. to get into permanent housing, we're trying to help everyone, right? And so. What we're doing right now is what we can do. So we do winter outreach where we where we go and give out gear, uh, blankets, supplies to people that are out on the street. We also run our own program where we provide transitional housing for um, f for all of our residents at Unity Village. And so um, and that through that we, we it started off as a tent encampment back at behind City Hall. It grew from there. Um, and now it's all tiny homes. We don't have any tents, and um, and so we, through our program, we have a thirty percent, around a thirty percent rehousing rate. So around a third of people who have come through have found permanent housing. I think that's great. Thirty percent is great. Um, what about the other seventy percent? What happened to them? Yeah. Um, so about a third, because um, the residents themselves form these rules that they that we have to live live with. That people have to get along. There's some rules they have to follow. Um, and, uh, and, and again, that we all work together to form those rules. We're not simply imposing them. But um, it, it, when people sign that they agree to follow these rules, we, and we don't, we don't instantly kick somebody out if like, a rule is violated. But like, there are certain people that you know, they've violated some obvious rules, and they, they've agreed to self-evict if, um, if they don't follow those rules. And then a third decided to leave. Um, either they, they didn't like the community living aspect or an, another reason, but they, they decided to leave. So about a third got permanent housing, a third decided to leave, and a third self-evicted. Now, how did, not only how did you get involved, but essentially what inspired you to lead a crusade such as this? <laughs> a crusade, uh, but uh, well, um, it, it, Homes Now started in June of 2017, so we, we've only been around for about two and a half years, and um, we, you know, homelessness is an issue that that is really obvious. We're seeing it get, I think it's getting worse every year. It feels like it's worse compared to 10 years ago to me. Um, and it's always been an, an ongoing problem in our country, but it, I think the I think it's mostly economic. I, I think that everyone has their issues, but like the main issue at the root of it is that rent costs a certain amount, 
and there's certain services that are needed and the services aren't available and the rent is getting higher and higher and the amount of money that you're getting in, whether you're working or whether you have disability or social security, it's not enough to cover those costs. So people fall through the cracks. So yeah, that totally fell through the uh, cracks. Um, how would, how do you draw the line between accountability and compassion? Um, well, I don't. I don't think that you necessarily have to draw a line between the two. I think that I think that compassion needs to have accountability, and accountability needs to have compassion. I think. I think that sometimes you don't. It's good to use an individualized approach. So every single person has their own issues, and the the approach that will work on them is different, right? So like the, the one of the biggest mistakes I see in in how homelessness is treated is that everyone's treated the same. So like. Yeah, everyone's tr everyone who's homeless is treated like they're they have severe mental health issues. Everyone's treated like they have severe addiction issues, and that's just not the case. It's the case for some people, but it's like you can't you can't put everyone in a box. You can't put er all of them in a box and say that you're all the same, right? And so. Um, it, when you when you do take that individualized approach and you do look at it on that on that case by case basis, then the line between compassion and accountability becomes a lot more clear. Yeah, absolutely. What is one question that, that you hope our community starts asking themselves? Uh, I, w w the main question I would say is how can the community uh, what what the community should ask themselves is what can we do to take action. You know, what can we do to take some risks, try things? Because it's not necessary. Sometimes people are afraid to try things because you don't know if it's going to make it worse or if it's going to be in an unmanageable situation. But, but simply trying something a lot of times will lead to something good. So I've noticed a lot of a lot of the, whether you're talking about local governments or whatever, they're, sometimes they're not they're risk averse. They they want to play it really safe, which I understand. But so when when the rubber meets the road, we've got to take action. And so I would I would encourage the community to figure out ways in which they themselves can take action. And so you know that's what these programs are all about: is that people like me and other people in town can can explain and and people can see the issue more clearly. So and you're just one person. Doing I'm just one, one person. Yeah. Well, Doug, I appreciate you being on here, uh, showing us what homes now uh, do, and um, best of luck in 2020. Oh, Seriously. thanks. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited about the future. Yeah, so thanks for being here. Yeah. Really appreciate thanks it. Thanks again Stay for here. having me. Oh,